All right, let's let's go to Matthew chapter 16 tonight. Matthew chapter 16, toward the end of the chapter, uh, verse 24. I'm going to just stay right there in verse 24 tonight. We won't be reading too much more than that. I am going to read a little something to you out of the Greek, if you don't mind. In fact, I brought the New Testament in the Greek tonight, and uh, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to show you a little bit something different. Uh, that uh, how the Greek reads versus the English reads, uh, but we will look at that. Uh, but first of all, let's let's look in Matthew 16 and in verse 24. And I want to preach on this subject: this subject of can you follow after Jesus? Can you follow after Jesus? And uh, and let's look in in. Uh, Chapter 16 of Matthew, verse 24, says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And he said, this is the words of Jesus, follow me. And that's my question tonight is, can you follow after Jesus? And the Lord tells us to. Uh, and so we know the answer to it, but he tells us some things here, gives us some directions here in verse 24 that I think are very important. Uh, if, you, if you look at verse 24 uh, in your Bible, what the, what the Bible reads, it says, then, then said Jesus unto his disciples. We know who his disciples are and who he's talking to. All right, he, he says this to his disciples and I want you to look at those words right there. He says, if any man will come after me, if any man will come after me. Now, now in my Bible, maybe not in your Bible, but I have, I have what's called a King James study Bible. Amen. And in that study Bible, it has a lot of information to me uh, as the pastor of the church. It has a lot of information to me, and it tells me different things. It's got a lot of footnotes. Uh, sometimes footnotes are not necessarily correct. Sometimes footnotes, I disagree with the person that wrote the footnotes. Uh, you know, they, some people have different opinions about what certain things mean. And I have read footnotes before, and I thought, well, I don't get that out of that at all. So sometimes I agree with footnotes. Sometimes I don't. But what my Bible does have is in this bit statement, if any man will come after me. In my Bible, the word man is in italics. Is in italics. Now, the reason it's in italics is because what, it, what that means in, in the study Bible is the fact that, that the translators put that word in there. Italics mean it was not in the original Greek. They put it in there so that we could help, they could help us to understand the meaning of the verse. And so mine says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, that word man was not in the original Greek. But the translators that took the Greek from the English wrote the word man in there because they wanted us to try to understand what Jesus was saying. But to make sure that I understood that that was not original, they put it in italics. And so that's what the word... Let me, let me tell you, I brought the Greek. I brought the... And, and if you look at it, and I cannot read Greek, but I've studied Greek. Uh, uh, to, to when I was working on different degrees, uh, I, I had to I had to learn a lot of this stuff in Greek, and and here's what the Greek. Follow along with me. I'm going to read this to you uh, as it's trapped. What they've done is they've taken the original Greek, as original as they can get uh, the the actual the actual Greek transcript that came when the disciples wrote these, these books, they don't know where those original transcripts are. They, they've disappeared. 
but what we have is the closest the closest transcripts to what the original disciples wrote. Amen. Now, and so here, this is what the Greek, I'm going to read it in the Greek because, because uh, when you translate it and into the English, they have to move words around because the Greek doesn't line up with the way we speak. In other words, what they've done here is they've taken the Greek text and then under each Greek word, they put the English word. So this is verse 24, translated from the Greek to the English. It reads this way. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires after me to come, let him deny himself and let him take up his cross, and let him follow me. You notice what the Greek said. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires after me to come. Now, so it's, it's translated, it's translated. In the Greek, it says, if anyone. And what the translators in the King James in 1611, they took that and they said, we need to help clarify that. And for some reason, they felt that man was, was necessary to put in there. But they put it in italics so that we'd know that they're the ones that said that put man in there. And so when we have that, it reads, if anyone. What does anyone compare to man? There's really no difference in the two. If any man uh, would come or if anyone would come. Because man meant all people, anyone. And so they, but for some reason in 1611, they felt like that the English would understand it better if they would put that word man in there. So they let us understand. They're putting that in there to help us understand if any man will come after me instead of if any one would come after me. But it means all people. It still means the same. All people. If any one, any person, man, woman, or child, would come after him, he said, uh, then he says, let them come after me and let them deny themselves. Let them take up his cross and let them follow me. That's the way the Greek read. Every one of them was separate. That is, that they were to come after him. They were to deny him. They were to take up their cross and they were to follow him. And if they were to do that, if they were to do that, uh, then, then they, they were going to accomplish what Jesus referred to as, as the, uh, the calling of his disciples. Each disciple would accomplish those things that Jesus wanted them to accomplish. The same thing applies to us. He, he said this to his disciples, but just because he said it to his disciples, does that mean that it does not apply to us? No, it means that everything in here, even though he said his disciples were to do this, you and I are to do the same thing because we are his disciples also. He's, he's not saying his apostles. He's saying his disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that we're not apostles, we're disciples. We're disciples of Christ. We're followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are to do these things. The same things that his disciples at the time that Jesus says this, that, and even in the, in the 21st century, it's all the same. We're his disciples and we are to come after him. We're to deny ourselves we're to take up our crosses and we are to follow him. If anyone, if any man, if any woman, if any boy, any girl, 
That's what he's saying. All people, anyone, everyone, man, and man meant man, woman, child, whatever. That was the definition of that term, man. So all of us are to do these four very important things. If, and that's what I want to talk about. Can we follow Christ? Well, the answer is yes, but with a little caveat there, we can follow Christ if we can do these four things. That's what following Christ is all about, doing these things right here. And so that's, what, that's why I asked the question, can we? Can you follow Christ? Can I follow Christ? Well, I can if I can do some of these things. Let's look at them and see whether or not we can really follow the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, first thing he says is that we must be willing to come. That's the first thing he said. If any man will come, if any one will come, any woman will come, if any child will come, if we will come after the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, you see, to, to come after Christ, it, that's a choice. That's your choice. You have a, you have a decision to make. Uh, it, you have an opportunity uh, to, to come to him. Uh, that, uh, we, we tend to think, he says, he says to come, uh, if any man will come. Well, you know what? It, uh, you, don't have, you don't have to do that. Uh, nobody's making you do that. It's, it's a desire. It's a want that, that to come after Christ. You remember Peter in the boat. Peter looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Bid me come. Peter was not going to step out of the boat until the Lord said, Come. And what did Jesus say? He said, Come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and he walked to the Lord Jesus Christ on water. It's an opportunity. That's what the to come means. It's an opportunity for you and me to step out of our comfort zone. That boat was Peter's comfort zone. It kept him dry. It kept him from sinking. It kept him from getting in the water. That's your comfort zone. You have a comfort zone. It might be in your house. It might be doing something. It might be around certain people. But you have a, you have a comfort zone. You feel comfortable when you're around certain people. You feel comfortable when you're in certain places. But you know what? It, it, and I know that there are places that I feel uncomfortable. There's places that I feel out of place. And it's, and it's hard sometimes stepping out and getting in places that are outside of our comfort zone. But yet sometimes it requires us, if we're going to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to sometimes step out of our comfort zone. That is that we meet somebody we haven't seen in a long time and we're surrounded by people everywhere and you're wanting to say, hey, would love for you to visit with us Sunday at church. But yet there's people standing there. There's people around you. There's people listening. Can we step out of our comfort zone and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Sometimes it requires us to do that. To, to come to the Lord Jesus Christ requires us to do some things. He doesn't make us do it. But he's calling us to do it. And uh, if sometimes, you know, you may have come to the Lord Jesus Christ because your friends came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you, it, you, you came to the Lord Jesus Christ because mom and dad wanted you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you came to the Lord Jesus Christ because there were, there were people there that were trying to push you down the aisle or push you to the uh, to, to talk to the Sunday school teachers or push you to come talk to the preacher. A lot of times people come to Christ that, that there was never, they never wanted to step out of their comfort zone. Yeah. They were pushed to do that. And sometimes we, we come to Christ because we, we're trying to satisfy somebody else. But Jesus wants us to come to him out of our own free will. He wants us to come to him because he has a desire for us, not other people. Not mom, not dad, not granny, not, not, not uh, somebody else. But we want, we want to go to the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus wanted us to come. It's a choice. And that's what it means by 
Are we willing to seek out Christ and say, bid me to come. Call me to come to you, Lord. And that's what, that's what he's looking for. He's looking for somebody that's willing to step out of the boat and come to him. And so we must be willing to do that. We must be willing to do the things that, that uh, to, to go to him. And then the second thing he says here, if we want to, if we really want to follow after Christ, the second thing he said here was let him deny himself. You must, you must deny yourself. That, that's a requirement if we're going to follow after Jesus. Amen. We've got to learn to deny ourselves. What does that mean to deny ourselves? That is, uh, somebody might interpret that. Well, I denied myself of chocolate cake last night. I, de I denied myself of a second helping of, of supper. Uh, I denied myself of this. I denied myself of that. That's not, and you know that. He's not, that's not what he's talking about. At all. Denying oneself is simply saying that it's not about me. It's about Christ. It, that's, that's what it, too many, too many are self-centered. We, we, we tend to be self-centered because we like pats on the back. We like people to like the things that we're doing. And we want to make sure that people see the good things that we're doing. And we like to be able to be told that we're doing something good, that we're accomplishing something, that we like to be given uh, good, good uh, uh, things and told good things about us. Everybody likes to be kind of self-centered about certain things. And, and, and so that's what, that's what this is the opposite of. To deny oneself is saying, it's not about me. I, I'm, I don't care to be, I don't care to be the center of attention. The center of attention ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We ought to center ourselves around the Lord Jesus Christ. There's different kinds of self-centeredness. There's the poor me that likes self-centered. That is, the poor me person wants everybody to know their problems. And they like to tell everybody their problems. Let me tell you about what I'm going through now. Let me tell you about all the things that I'm facing. Let me tell you about the, all the bad things that are happening to me. People sometimes just like to be the center of attention because they are going through such horrible things and they want everybody to know it. But, but that becomes self-centered. That becomes, look at me, look at all of my problems. And, and then there's the powerful me. The powerful me is just the opposite. Look at my accomplishments. Look at everything that I've done. Look at all the things that I've accomplished. And boy, I've, I've done this, I've done that. I've, 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 I've become, uh, you know, uh, that I've, I've received lots of things. I've become wealthy. I've, I have lots of nice things. We have all kinds of me. It's and it become all of it becomes self-centered. But in fact, everything, what we should be saying is it's all about Jesus Christ. Whatever I'm going through, I'm dependent upon Jesus Christ. Whatever I've got, I'm thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever I've accomplished, it's all about Jesus Christ. Christ has to be the center of our life. And so we have to remove ourselves and to place Christ first. We have to remove our problems. We have to remove our accomplishments. And we push them aside and we said, you know what? It's about Jesus Christ. That's what deny, deny yourself means. That is, it's not about you. It's not about what you're going through. It's not about what you have. It's about Jesus. And Jesus has to be the center of our attention. And the third thing that he says here, if we're going to come after the Lord Jesus Christ, that is to do the things that Christ would have, we have to come after him. We have to deny ourselves. And the third thing he says, we have to take up our cross. We have to take up our cross. What does he mean, take up our cross? Are we going to be crucified? No. But in the Roman law, a criminal had to carry their cross to their crucifixion. When they were going to be crucified to death, the law required them to actually carry their cross to the place where they were going to be crucified. 
They had to bear it upon their shoulders. They had to drag that cross to the place where they were going to be roped to it, tied to it, or nailed to it. But that was what they required. They, they had to take up their cross. The Lord Jesus Christ uses that term and tells us that we have to take up our cross. That what, what is our cross? Is it something that you're going to be crucified to? Well, we, we usually are crucified to that cross. That cross is your troubles. That cross is the things that you're going through. That cross is all the duties that you've surrendered to do and all the, all the things that you're going to have to go through. That cross is, is your financial problems that you're facing. That cross is your health issues that you're going through or that you know someone that is going through that. That cross is your loved ones and, and all the things that they're facing. Take up your cross is carrying all those things upon your shoulders. Everything that you're going through, you have to be able to carry it, not to be crucified. You carry it to the Lord Jesus Christ. You carry all of your burdens. You carry all of your cares. You carry all of your, uh, your troubles. You carry all of your financials, your health, your, your loved ones. You carry them all on your shoulders and you take them not to somebody, not to Dr. Phil or Dr. Bottle Stop, but you carry them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he is the center. We're not, we're not the center of it. Christ is the center of it. And we carry our cross to him. Take up your cross, your problems, your troubles, the things that you're facing, and you take them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we follow after Christ? We can if we come to him, if we deny ourselves, if we take our cross to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally, four, he said, follow me. Are we willing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Follow his example. Follow his lifestyle. Are we willing to follow the way that he worshiped God? Are we willing to follow the way he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? Are we willing to follow the life of Christ with our life? That's what he means, follow me. Not, we can't physically follow him. He died here physically in a human body some 1950 years ago. It was, it, you know, a, a long time ago. We can't physically follow him. We are to spiritually follow him today. We are to look at him and do what he tells us to do, to live our life the way he said live our life. And so we need to do the things the way Christ said do them. That's what he means, follow him. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we leave here tonight, let us try to, to come after the Lord Jesus Christ, denying ourselves, uh, making him the center of attention, uh, carrying our cross to him and, and following him in, in every which way that he set the example for us. So let, let's have us a word of prayer and then, and then we'll get ready to, uh, to close out tonight. So let's, let's have us a, a word of prayer.